statistics on the acreage and the size of the year's potato crop by checking the Kern County growers, shippers, and the Department of Agriculture. Reports are sent to Chicago headquarters for study and analysis by the refrigerator freight traffic and transportation departments. Based on this estimate, stockpiling of refrigerator cars begins at least a month before harvest time. The goal is from seven to 8,000 cars on hand prior to the harvest. Meanwhile, planning continues in other directions, marshalling train crews, lining up switch crews and locomotives at strategic points throughout the 8,000 square miles of potato country. And suddenly, it's the month of May, and it's potato harvest time in Kern County, the nation's biggest grower of early potatoes, and second only to Aroostook County, Maine, in the National Potato Sweepstakes. Kern County's chief asset is the ripening and harvest of its potatoes earlier than other potato areas. The quicker these potatoes reach eastern markets, the higher the price. And every day, every hour lost translates into hard cash lost to the growers and shippers of Kern County. But even if eastern markets could wait, and they can't, there's no letting these prime quality, thin-skinned white potatoes remain in the ground a few days extra after ripening. Kern County is hot. To avoid loss of quality, these potatoes must be dug out of the ground at maturity. Not before, not later. There's no storage for a couple of weeks, or even days. It's out of the ground, thorough washing and cleaning. Grading for size. Packing, weighing, and stitching of sacks. Ready for loading into waiting refrigerator cars to be hustled off to markets two or three thousand miles away. Refrigerator cars, each cleaned and mechanically checked, have been spotted the night before at each shipper's platform for loading and early morning start on the long transcontinental run. Cushioning material is laid on car floors to protect potatoes on the bottom. The loading operation we see here is being repeated throughout Kern County at 125 packing sheds serving from 700 to 1,000 shippers. Switch and train crews begin the shuttle service of moving loaded cars from country stations to central ice docks. Switching service two or three times a day eliminates loading delays, making it possible for the average packer to ship up to 15 carloads of potatoes a day. Bakersfield, California, nerve center and origin point for the famous GFX and BTX trains. Three dock type electronically operated icing machines, each one requiring about a minute and a half or less for a full bunker icing of 11,300 pounds of chunk ice per car. Working together, these machines can completely ice a refrigerator train at an average of 30 seconds per car. Perishable freight trains leaving California will be iced as many as five times in transit to Chicago. Communications plays an important part in coordinating the various operations required to make up a train, get it out of the yards fast, and keep it rolling on schedule. This observation tower in the main yard at Bakersfield is equipped with electronic control and communication devices. The yardmaster, with a full view of operations going on below, is in immediate communication with every key point in the yards. During loading, icing, and switching, the clerical staff is busy, completing billings, car records, wheel reports, icing instructions. All this data and other in-transit handling instructions are wired ahead to the superintendent of car service in Topeka, to the manager of the refrigerator department in Chicago, to all terminals along the way, so that yardmasters, handling crews, and refrigerator department inspectors 
can plan their work before arrival of these potato trains and all perishable freight trains. Final check and this spud special is ready to roll. Clearing the yard at Bakersfield. Now on its way. An hour later, another train on its way. Six, eight, ten trains rolling a day. Every day for the next six weeks. Published, guaranteed GFX schedule out of Bakersfield provides for sixth morning delivery in Chicago. Barstow, California, where main lines from north and south converge to run east. Barstow is the first service stop for GFX, BTX, and CTX trains. A complete mechanical inspection and a new train crew takes over with 16 more crew changes between here and Chicago. Less than an hour and we're rolling again across the desert toward the mountains of northern Arizona. But before these mountains are reached, a stop at Needles, California for the first re-icing in transit. Re-icing a 75-car potato train takes about 45 minutes. On our way again across Arizona to Belen, New Mexico, one of the principal terminal stops. Again, time out for thorough mechanical inspection and re-icing. Many of these cars are carrying potatoes already sold with definite destinations listed. But there are carloads of rollers in this train and in most perishable freight trains eastbound. Rollers are sold by telegraph or long distance telephone while in transit and can be diverted by the shipper to St. Louis or Cleveland or Indianapolis or wherever he can find a buyer before the train reaches Chicago. Belen, New Mexico is the first principal diversion point, not only for potatoes, but for all perishable freight trains passing through eastbound. Here the shipper can divert a carload or as many carloads as he requests, north, south, or east. Or he can divert at Clovis, New Mexico to Texas and southeastern destinations. Easy, fast rolling across the plains, re-iced at Wainoka, Oklahoma, and on east to the important Argentine yards adjacent to Kansas City, Missouri. Here is one of the best equipped freight terminals in the world. 56 classification tracks and a trackage capacity of 9,000 cars. On peak days, between 6 and 7,000 cars pass through this yard, moving east and west. Consists of perishable trains are received several hours ahead of actual arrival. Diversion corrections are made. On arrival, yard masters are all set to break up trains in line with amended consists. Now we're up in one of the yard control towers overlooking the classification tracks. Some of these cars will go to connecting lines for movements southeast and other points in the Middle West, either by direct assignment from point of origin or diverted by shippers' instructions in transit. The balance of the train, with new cars added, will continue on through to Chicago. No more car riders or brakemen using hand brakes to control speed of cars in classification operations at Argentine. Here the work is done by electronically controlled retarders, manipulated from central control towers. Re-iced for the fourth time since leaving Bakersfield four days ago, the entire train is checked by a yard clerk equipped with radio walkie-talkie. Car numbers called into the yard office, permits teletype wheel reports being prepared, and waybills arranged for delivery to the conductor without delay. Checked from locomotive to caboose, the spud special pulls out on the last lap to Chicago. And now into the fifth day, within easy, fast-rolling distance of Chicago. End of trip, early in the evening of the fifth day. Easing into the Corwith yard, just outside of the city. On time, and with a couple of hours to spare. Here, in railroad language, the train is dead. 
but the perishable freight job goes on for several more hours. Yard engines start switching cars out of the train to meet fixed schedules. Some cars removed, headed for Chicago warehouses. Other cars build to the Chicago produce terminal. Potatoes to be reloaded on trucks for local delivery to hundreds of retail markets and stores throughout metropolitan Chicago. Still another group of cars moved on to connect with the Pennsylvania Railroad, the Erie, the B&O, the New York Central, the Nickel Plate, and a dozen other lines. But there is more to perishable freight service than the movement of loaded refrigerator cars on fast schedules. The railroad's agricultural department has engaged in non-operating services for more than 50 years, working closely with packers, growers, and perishable freight shippers on how best to cultivate, transport, and market their fruits and vegetables. To encourage and help promote the expansion of orchard and field crop agriculture in the territory it serves, field men are sent to investigate idle or waste lands throughout the Southwest. Their job has been to search out soil that could be made arable and developed into fertile areas for the cultivation of marketable crops. Today, large volume harvests are being shipped from sectors of the Southwest originally tested by agricultural department men and designated as high potential producing area. In addition to continually cooperating with the United States Department of Agriculture, the AAR, and with shippers, Santa Fe has a broad research and testing program designed to develop new and more efficient methods of protective service on a year-round basis. Scientific inquiry is carried forward into the problems of refrigerator car engineering and construction, insulation, air circulation fans, icing, heating, all with a view to speeding up transport and eliminating spoilage in transit. The characteristic icicle design on the door of this refrigerator car represents the latest advance of protective service in transit. This is the new mechanical temperature control car. A diesel electric generator supplies the power for the refrigerating unit. With tanks under the car carrying enough fuel oil for about 14 days operation. Built and equipped at the car shops in West Wichita, Kansas, these new MTC cars are operated at sub-zero temperatures for the protection of frozen commodities. Throughout the system, refrigerator department men are stationed at icing stations and freight terminals. Their job is to inspect each car of perishable freight passing through, seeing to it that all refrigeration, ventilation, or heater service instructions as specified on the way bill are complied with special service and by regular scheduled service. On a seasonal basis for certain crops and all the year round for others, the transport of perishable freight over long distances has become one of the important phases of American railroading, involving the health of the nation and the economic well-being of a vital and growing industry. The major factors contributing to improved distribution of perishables are shortened schedules, continual improvement of equipment, and advances in the science of refrigeration and other protective services. This, then, is the perishable story. And Santa Fe is proud of its contribution to the safe and efficient transportation of fresh fruits and vegetables, which provide the all year round balanced diet, which makes America the best fed nation on earth.